Hey, this is Gary Contessa for Gary Contessa TV, and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about equipment and equipment on horses. The, the key to talking about equipment is that in the battle of horse versus human, if the horse wants to win, he's going to win every single time. Horses are 1,100, 1,200 pounds, and the humans that are steering them, with reference to jockeys or a groom handling them or whatever, it, we're talking 100 pounds, 150 pounds. So if the, if the horse wants to win that battle, he's going to be able to win that battle every time. So equipment is very, very important part of our everyday battle that we have with horses and getting them to steer. If your horse doesn't steer, he's not going to win. If he's taken, if he's giving you more of an effort trying to bear out to the right or lug into the left instead of putting all his energy towards running straight, he's not going to win the race. He's just using up too much of his energy during that race. So steering and equipment is very important. Now, when it comes to bits, this is an egg butt bit. Looks like an egg, sits in the horse's mouth, a nice healthy bit. The horse's mouth goes into this bit like this, and this is the bit of choice for me, for a horse that is cooperative. It's a, it's a light bit on the mouth, it's made of aluminum, the horse barely feels it in there, you can steer the horse with this bit, and this is our race equipment for today. My horse today is wearing an egg butt bit. It's a kind bit, but not all horses are kind. A lot of horses don't cooperate. So when a horse doesn't cooperate, we may have to get a little bit more severe bit in his mouth. Make it easier for that 100 pound jockey or 100 pound exercise rider to steer that horse. So if the egg butt is not getting the job done, we'll go to the next bit of choice would be this, and it's called a ring bit. Now, this is a ring bit with a half cheek. Horse's mouth, we're gonna pretend this is the horse's mouth. Horse's mouth comes here, it's in his mouth. This half cheek, sits along the side of his cheek and it makes him easier to steer. There's a half cheek on the inside, half cheek on the outside. And that's going to help the rider steer that horse where you want him to go. Now this ring really doesn't have anything to do with the steering, but the horse is going to feel that ring bouncing up and down off his tongue. And it just gives that horse something else to think about. Don't forget, this battle is psychological as much as it is physical. Horse is always going to win the physical battle, so you want to beat him at his own game with psychological war. And we put that bit in his mouth, and he feels that ring, and quite often he's going to be content to be steered. And so that's a ring bit, and we use that. That's our second level steering bit, the ring bit with the half cheek. Now, quite often, horses don't cooperate with the ring bit either. So the next level, the third level bit for a horse that doesn't cooperate is this bit right here. And it's called a Houghton bit. It's a leather bit, horse's mouth goes in here. It's got a bar on it that sits up under his chin. This bar is gonna sit up under that horse's chin and jockeys call this power steering. It's a little bit more severe, but that horse grabs onto that and that bar up under his chin is going to help that jockey steer that horse. And most of the time, an uncooperative steering horse will cooperate with the Houghton bit. I'd say 20% of my horses use the Houghton bit. It's a leather bit. It's very kind on the mouth, very smooth on the inside. But they're going to they're gonna cooperate because they feel that bar up underneath their chin. And it really helps the jockey win the battle of of steering. It's called the Houghton bit. It's a third level bit. We have, uh, we have, we can get more severe with bits, but hopefully we don't have to. And when we, when we have to get more severe with a bit, we might go to this. And I'm going to grab another one for you. This is a D bit, a standard D bit, but we take a plastic burr. Now, that might look like nails, but it's plastic. It's got smooth ends. It's not going to, it's not going to put a hole in a horse's mouth. It's not going to hurt your fingers at all. You're not, it's not going to puncture anything. But when you put this bit in a horse's mouth 
and that burr is on the outside or we can turn it around and we can put it on the inside for a horse that might lug in. That burr will surely deter a horse from drifting out or drifting in. You put this burr on a horse, you don't put it on both sides because both sides would be a real psychological problem. You put it on a horse that pulls to one side. Some horses pull out, some horses pull in. You'll see it. Uh, you've, you've all seen a race where all, the whole field is going into the turn and one horse continues straight. We call it bolting. This is going to deter that. He's going to feel that burr up against the side of his face and make it easier for that jockey to steer him. We have to win the battle of steering. Horses must cooperate and be able to be steered, or you're never going to win a race. You're going to lose races if you can't steer your horse. So steering is one of our most common problems and our most fix fixable problems. That's something we want to fix. Now, horses, when they run, are poetry in motion. So we want to do things to make horses run straight, and we want them to run much more correct. So, if a horse carries his head too high, horses have a tendency to carry that head up high, we might want to try this. And you've seen these, this is called a shadow roll. Now, why would a shadow roll make a horse want to drop his head? You put this just below his eyes and the horse can't see down anymore. So the horse is going to try and look over the top of the shadow roll and in order to look over the top of the shadow roll, he's got to drop his head down. So a shadow roll is going to make a horse drop his head a little bit. And think about it. If you're running and you're running with your head up or you're running with your head down, I've had enough baseball coaches over the year that say, Contessa, run with your head down. Don't run with your head up because you lose action by running with your head up. So a shadow roll will help us drop that horse's head just a little bit and get him to run straighter and get him to run with his head down. Much better action for a horse, much more successful action for a horse. So that's the shadow roll. Now let's talk a little bit about blinkers and why we might need blinkers on a horse. Horses don't necessarily focus. I go to I'll go to a school and go to a kindergarten class and those kids don't focus and horses are children in a way. We need horses to focus. If a horse is running forward and he's looking over there and he's running like this or he's looking over there and he's running like this, he's not putting all his energy to run, running forward. So the first thing we're going to do to get a horse to run forward, your standard blinker. Your standard blinker in this business, we call it a three-quarter cup with a hole. That will focus the horse to look forward, but the hole will give him the opportunity to see if another horse is coming so he doesn't get caught on the wire. Three-quarter cup with a hole to make that horse pay attention to what's going on in front of him, but it, the hole will give him the opportunity to see what's coming behind him as well. Three-quarter cup with a hole. Standard, standard blinker. Now, that's not the only standard blinker that we have. Here's another one. We make them, we make them match the owner's colors. Three-quarter cup with a hole. The hole is there to give that horse a chance to see behind him what's coming. Make the horse win three-quarter cup. Here's a little different one. This is what we call a full cup on the outside, occasionally known as an extension blinker. This goes hand in hand with the bridle that I showed you with the burr for a horse that's difficult to steer. We found if you close up the eye that's, that's controlling the, the bad area of that horse's steering, the right eye if the horse is bearing out, the left eye if the horse is bearing in, if you can close up that field of vision just a little bit, it makes him a lot easier to steer. So we'll put an extension blinker or a full cup on the outside, no hole, for a horse that's really giving a jockey a hard time steering. Full cup on the outside. In this horse's uh, instance, we, we go with a little or no cup on the inside because we're really not trying to make the horse focus. We're trying to make him steer better. So extension blinker for a horse that doesn't quite steer as well. And that extension blinker can go on the outside or it can go on the inside. Here's another blinker that's kind of interesting. This is Maggie Moss's silks, and this is a French cup. Now, 
This cup, unlike the three-quarter cup, just goes straight out from the horse's eyes. And you say, what are you, what are you trying to achieve? We're trying to achieve two things with a French cup. Number one, we need a slight amount of focus forward from that horse. But the horse that wears the French cup is a horse that is spending way too much time watching what the jockey's doing. You put a French cup on the horse who, when the jockey goes to whip right-handed, he ducks in. When the jockey goes to whip left-handed, he ducks out. When the jockey changes his hands, horses have a full field of vision. You gotta remember, a horse that's looking forward sees everything that's going on behind them. They have a full field of vision, uninhibited, except by the hair on their mane. So, that's why when you're standing behind a horse, don't ever m make a sudden movement because that horse will kick you. That'll be a natural reaction because he sees what you're doing behind him. We put a French cup on a horse that is paying too much attention to what the jockey's doing. What's going on behind him? We need that fo focus to be forward. We don't want him to be reacting to what the jockey's doing. And so we'll go to a French cup. And we have different variations of every blinker, constant variations on every blinker. I'll, I'll take a scissor or I'll take a cutting device, make these smaller, add a cup, make it bigger, change cups, different cup on the inside, different cup on the outside. But it's all to correct the horse. And every horse being an individual, we have hundreds of blinkers in here for every shape and size to correct different kinds of problems. Here's a full cup on the outside, no cup on the inside. Here's what we call cheater blinkers, just taking out the tiniest sliver of a field of vision on a horse. And all of these blinkers at one time or another were made for one particular horse. So every horse that needs blinkers has their own blinkers. And this is what we do. We're constantly tweaking equipment, trying to get horses to pay attention. A horse that is focused and a horse that is moving in the right way, his body is in the right place, his head is in the right place, his legs are moving forward, and the least amount of fight with the jockey, that's the horse that's going to win a race. Thanks.